cops alike on most shocking. When a kidnapper fires at cops out the back window, his hostage brings the chase to a catastrophic end. Oh, just slammed into the truck! Plus, a motorcycle meth head tears up the back roads of Texas. But when officers close in, he makes a fatal decision to fight. Then, police pursue a madman in a stolen ambulance until one wrong move has him headed to the ER. Later, a reckless fugitive burns asphalt at over 100 miles an hour, leading to a devastating head-on crash. Oh, just head on the van. This is not a movie. Everything you're about to see is real. Brace yourself. This is most shocking. High-speed pursuits. Houston, Texas. Officer Michael Ruby tracks down a car with a reported armed suspect. But the tales are sketchy. A caller had said that he had shot at another vehicle. Unknown reason why. There appears to be a woman driver and a male passenger in the back. What's clear is they aren't going to cooperate. Units from multiple agencies surround the sedan, trying to box it in. That's when one of the officers sees the grim reality. He could see the gun laying across there, pointed right at her head. And that's when he yelled, it's a hostage situation. The hostage taker is Jeremy Roberson. And he's kidnapped his former girlfriend. Cruisers hang back, not wanting to force the gunman's hand. But suddenly, there's a traffic jam. Roberson orders his ex to pass on the shoulder. And you can go on the shoulder. No luck. The vehicle was trapped in by a pickup truck that was trying to get out of the way. Shot fired! Shot fired! He just shot into another vehicle. I really thought that he had just killed somebody right in front of me. The pickup driver clears a path, having narrowly escaped injury. Overhead, choppers swoop in and soon witness a horrifying sequence of events. And you can see a cruiser moves in now. Was that the rear window flying? Oh, and they slam into the wall! I observed the, wind, the back window come out of the car. I saw the barrel of the shotgun pointing at us, and I said, oh, no, here we go. Hey, this guy's shooting at us right now. I could hear the little plink noises coming off of the, uh, off the hood. To get a clear shot at police, Wilberson kicks out the glass, startling his victim into a near wipeout. Then, as officers dodge the buckshot, an ominous message comes over Ruby's radio. Dispatch tells us that there's an amber alert out on the on this car. It changed everything. The girlfriend's daughter is also a hostage. But the warning hasn't reached other departments yet. And mom is about to do something desperate. She opens her door looking for an opportunity. With Roberson continuing to shoot at police, she makes her move. They're coming up on some traffic here. Oh, just slammed into the truck. The driver was thrown out and the car is still going. It's crossing the shoulder. Heading onto the grass, an unbelievable accident here. Cruisers are moving in. She hit the truck. All of a sudden, you know, she comes flying out of the car on the freeway. Trusting her airbag to save her life, the woman cuts hard right. Vehicle's wrecked out, wrecked out. And plows headlong into the back of a pickup. She's thrown free. but instantly hops to her feet unscathed. 
The status of those still inside the vehicle is unknown. I just maneuvered my car in between her and the guy with the gun that was still in the car. Start hearing shots being fired from all the different police agencies, and it was chaos. They didn't know that there was a child in the car. I started running, screaming there was a kid in the car as loud as I could because I was scared to death that that poor kid was going to get hurt. Officers quickly hold their fire, not knowing what damage has been done. Putting their own lives on the line, they approach the wreck when suddenly the gunman stirs weapon at the ready. Police rush in to rescue the daughter, pulling her unharmed from her safety seat. As they whisk her into the clear, Roberson makes one last stand. Finally, it's over. The suspect's days of terrorizing others have come to an end without an innocent person being hurt. With the accidents and all the gunfire that took place, it, it was just a miracle of God that that child was not injured. And the woman, too, being thrown out of the car, and she didn't get hit by another car. She was extremely blessed on the outcome. Williamson County, Texas. Meth lab operator Joe Thornton has been spotted cruising back roads on his dirt bike. And not even a rifle in his face is slowing him down. He's dodged warrants before. Now, he taunts Deputy Barry Simmons as he goes for it again. The officer races in with a quick response. A fender to the tailpipe. The hit knocks Thornton off the road, but his turf-hugging hog is right at home on the bumpy terrain. Simmons thunders back onto concrete. Lieutenant James David moves in as crucial backup. After all, this shifty drug maker has been known to carry a gun. Thornton weaves and blocks, not wanting the cop to take another shot at his chassis. Then he cranks up the speed, leaving the cruiser to catch air at a cross street. Thornton finally decides there's only one way to gain an edge. Go off-road. Simmons spins out around each turn. Just when it seems he's made his great escape, Thornton's bike throws its chain. That's when the hot rodder makes a deadly decision. With his motorcycle crippled, Thornton grabs for something on his handlebar. It's his gun. Officers can't give him a chance to use it. The suspect is hit five times. Daddy, we got shots fired! Shots fired! Suspect is down! But no sooner have the shots stopped than a new threat emerges. The cruiser's white hot undercarriage has set the grass ablaze. It threatens to become a full scale conflagration. Lieutenant David rushes in with a fire extinguisher, dousing the flames before they can spread. 
Finally, the scene is under control, leaving the deputies with just one question. Why? They'll later learn that they weren't just chasing a drug maker. They were chasing a drug user. Thornton had methamphetamines flowing through his veins during this outrageous two-wheeled getaway. But when he raised the stakes to life and death, he forced officers to put an end to his rampage for good. Roma, Texas. In this dusty border town, a police unit overtakes a pickup jammed with seven illegal immigrants. Patrolman Mario Lujano tries to stop the people smuggler, Cole. I turned on my overheads. When he saw that, he just, he just freaked out and he punched him. The chase is on. The international border is less than a mile away. Suddenly, the driver rockets off the road and through an empty lot. Up ahead, the Rio Grande River. The dumbfounded patrolman can't believe what happens next. Got the vehicle. Got the vehicle. This guy opens up the door. He starts hanging out the vehicle. The vehicle's still rolling, and then he just pops up. And I'm just shocked at what I'm looking at. The driver bails from the truck at a speed of 30 miles an hour. The immigrants are trapped as the pickup plows through trees and into the water. I stopped, ran into the wood line, and I had noticed that the 20-foot drop that the vehicle had taken. I ran down, and there were seven people in there. They were making a lot of noise, trying to get out, pounding on the windows, pounding on, on everything. More police converge on the scene. There's enough manpower, but is there enough time? There was a rack that was covering the rear windshield. One of the illegals was trying to move the rack. I heard inside the vehicle, you know, we've got a child. We've got a child. I believe that's what gave me more strength to pull that rack completely off. An eight-year-old child and the rest of the group are pulled to safety. The coyote, who left them to die, also comes through without a scratch. He swims to safety in Mexico. We noticed him on the other side of the river just taunting us and uh, screaming obscenities. And just he just didn't think nothing, no, no, no respect for life. Uh, the guy took it in stride like I lost a load and see you guys later. It's a grim reminder that along the border, the quest for the American dream is often a matter of life and death. Up next, cops chase a man armed with an AK-47 and get pinned down by a hail of bullets. Plus, reckless bank robbers bounce off cars but meet their match against a four-ton dump truck. 84, 31, 31. And a high sea showdown with smugglers forces the Coast Guard to open fire. That's straight ahead on most shocking high-speed pursuits. Columbus, Ohio. 1813, it's a Cherokee, four door. This guy has an uh, AK assault rifle on him, also. We have seen. 23 year old Alao Knowles just used an assault rifle on two people during a bitter family dispute. Hold on, we're going to go eastbound Morse Road. Eastbound Morse. Now, police officer Daniel Jones leads the frantic chase of this desperate gunman. We know this guy just shot two people, it was confirmed, because one of them was his cousin, the other was a friend. Ahead, a cop tries to stop the fugitive with spike strips. Knowles responds by opening fire. I saw a flash and heard a pop, and I just thought, oh, I didn't just see what I saw, did I? I was, I was shocked. 
No police are hit, at least not yet. But Officer Jones knows they have to stay tight on this guy's bumper, even if that means being in the gun sights of an AK-47. Okay, five. We want no spike. This guy just pointed his assault rifle at us, too. He's shooting at us with a fully automatic 7.62 millimeter round. And he just shot two people. He's not going to stop. Okay, 5-7, it looks like we're going to go north on Houston. Stand by. Suddenly, Knowles tears into a residential neighborhood. Hey, guys, hold on, don't get close. He's pointing, he's pointing AK out. Back off, back off. Then, he screeches to a halt. I started firing through my windshield, and my probationary officer started firing. I'm nervous from breathing. And then we took back off again. Knowles is back on the move. But around another corner, the chase comes to an end, and the real shootout begins. It's chaos, and we're on a residential street on a Sunday night, and he's shooting. The only thing I thought in our mind was this guy, he's... He's not stopping. You know, we can't let him go. He's going to go kill somebody else. Officer Jones bravely decides to act. I split second decision just to charge him. And I thought, well, you know, if he pulls it, I, I still got, I know I got a few rounds left in this magazine. You know, I can stop the threat, hopefully, before he stops me. I ended up shooting the suspect three times. But Jones's heroism comes at a price. Copy, Officer Hicks. He stumbles to the grass and collapses. The shooter's third victim of the day. I'm looking up at this crystal blue sky on a sunny night in July. I'm going, man, I'm going to die. Has the suspect been incapacitated? Incredibly, as officers converge, the shooter tries to act innocently. I could use a couple more officers in there. Okay, you got a few running up here. He gets out, he puts his, he, like, immediately puts his hands up. Like, time out, I'm done. And I, I don't know how I can, I didn't, I didn't, I never fired. It's a useless display. He's arrested, while fellow cops rush to their cohort's aid. Officer Jones is awarded the Silver Cross and Blue Star for his heroism. Fortunately, he ended this horrible shooting spree without anyone being killed. And the citizens of Columbus are forever grateful. Next day after that, an old neighbor of mine, their, um, their kid gave me a uh, little guardian angel, policeman's guardian angel. I said, man, because it's miraculous. He, no officer other than you. I mean, nobody got killed. Huntington Beach, California. An ambulance roars through the downtown business district. Officer Jeff Baker has a strong suspicion that something's not right. The ambulance drove by me at approximately 100 miles an hour with no headlights on, no uh, emergency lights. Knew that there was, there was something wrong because that's not a typical speed for an ambulance even when they're going to the hospital. Wherever this driver is headed, he's putting lives at risk. We're back probably a couple hundred yards because of the way this guy's driving. Extremely reckless and with traffic out on the road, you know, our, our biggest concern is, is someone going to get hurt? Minutes into the chase, the ambulance company confirms what cops had feared. The vehicle is stolen. This is by far one of the most dangerous situations that I've ever been involved in as a police officer. We had to stop the ambulance before somebody got hurt. Before officers can try to take him out, the ambulance launches into a radical wobble. Cops can only watch as the disaster unfolds.
The driver rams a concrete barrier. Then skids down the asphalt. Officers approach with guns drawn. They see movement inside. The ambulance door opens. But no one comes out. The renegade could be making a stand or just injured. A brave officer climbs the wreckage to check. Fortunately, the man is not armed and offers no resistance. He even tries to make his crime sound innocent. He told me that he was walking by the ambulance company, looked in the ambulance, saw the keys in the ignition, the door was unlocked, and decided to take it for a ride. The suspect dismisses this terrifying run as nothing more than a joyride. But Officer Baker has a very different name for it. That would be a Grand Theft Auto. Marietta, Ohio. Two bank robbers in a van make a getaway, but police catch up with them. The desperate crooks speed down the middle of a busy thoroughfare. They're hoping to reach the interstate. The fugitives squeeze through a cluster of traffic, recklessly colliding with a car. They smash into an SUV. The beat-up van drops parts as the outlaws hit the on-ramp. But there's a new problem. They're headed straight for a construction zone. The lane narrows, but the van doesn't slow. The suspects bear down on a giant dump truck. Trying to pass on the left, the felons plow into the massive rig. And nearly flip against a steep embankment. The two men run into the woods. But they don't get far. In their reckless run from the law, the bank robbers jeopardize the lives of countless civilians. For that, they'll be paying a high price behind bars. Coming up, a Texas outlaw tries to make a getaway through a cow pasture. But first, cops pursue a fugitive hell-bent on escape, then watch in horror as he hits a car head-on. Oh! He just head on the van. When most shocking high-speed pursuits returns. Coming up next on True Crime Network. for Texas. A speeding driver refuses to stop for police. Corporal Kevin Hilliard stays close, preparing himself for a drawn-out chase. 
I thought this was going to be a long pursuit, and my idea was to just stay with him, don't pressure him, give him every opportunity to bring this thing to an end without anybody getting hurt. Up ahead, Officer Tommy Taylor tries to deploy spike strips. But the suspect races up too fast and blows right by the trap. And he was putting his hands up in the air at the time I felt that he was about to give up. And uh, then he sped off to the right-hand side of my uh, patrol unit, uh, ducking his head under the steering wheel uh, and continued driving. Taylor joins the chase along with a third unit. The lead foot floors it on a treacherous stretch of two-lane highway. Suddenly, he swerves into oncoming traffic and straight for disaster. Hilliard is horrified by the devastating head-on collision. You could see him swerving over. You saw the van coming, and you knew that he, he reached a point where he wasn't going to come back. It's just the feeling of helplessness that you see this happen, and you know what's going to happen, and there's nothing you can do to stop it. The scene erupts in a thick cloud of smoke and debris. As the dust settles, Hilliard prepares for the worst. I knew that we were going to have a pretty bad scene. There were going to be some people injured, uh, probably people killed. Hilliard runs toward the mangled van, stunned to see a victim emerge from the wreck. To his astonishment, the officer finds all three occupants alive. When I walked up, the driver and the passenger were both alert and conscious and were talking to me, and I was amazed that they were in as good a shape as they appeared to be at that time. As for the suspect, the violent impact propels his car several hundred feet. The first thing I initially done is grab my patrol rifle. I did not know for sure if I had an armed suspect, what exactly is going to occur. With guns drawn, the officers approach the vehicle. They find the man lying motionless inside the smoldering wreck. It really appeared that the uh, suspect was deceased. Well, then the, the suspect, I noticed his arms started moving around, and then he started making some noises. But then, without warning, the car catches fire. It could explode at any second. The car's going to blow up and kill you if you don't get back. Let's move. Get up. up! The car's going to blow up! Do we need to carry you? Risking their own lives, Taylor and Hilliard managed to pull the man from the wreck. Once we pulled him uh, out of the wreckage, uh, a gun was found uh, just right underneath where he was laying. The felon, Donald Kane Jr., survives the crash. He's arrested for aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. In this case, that wasn't the firearm, but 2,000 pounds of bone-crushing steel. In all my years of duty, I've never seen a crash like that. I didn't see how anybody could have survived that crash. I thought that I'd just seen people die. Hollywood, California. Patrol cars storm the famed Hollywood Boulevard. Tourists find themselves in the front row of a real-life police chase. A mother and daughter are on the run after refusing to pull over for a traffic stop. A news helicopter follows the bizarre scene. Curping up there on Hollywood Boulevard. Lots of traffic here. Now we'll see what happens. She stops hard on the brakes, and now she's backing into the police car. That is assault with a deadly weapon on a police officer. The mother raises the stakes, taking deadly aim at the cruiser then recklessly navigates through a sea of traffic. You turn too many people out there in the middle of the roadway. They've got to do something to bring this to an end. Someone's going to get hit. This is more like a movie than a pursuit. 
police attempt to trap the sedan. Now, if she tries to ram these officers, this could be very, very dangerous. And she's going to go right through. Unbelievable. The women break free, then boldly head back to the sightseeing mecca. A busy intersection detours the fugitives. She's got a red light. She's going to U-turn once again. And look at the LAPD. Oh, sideswipes the LAPD. Another one. That's great. That second hit will be her last. The driver's knocked out when she blasts into the black and white. The vehicle rolls to a dead stop. Officers have the car surrounded. People taking pictures of this as if it's some sort of Hollywood stunt. This is not a stunt. This is very real. The daughter checks on her mom. With guns drawn, officers order her to the ground. Police move in. The teen is taken into custody. While deputies pull the unconscious woman to the ground. The mother is taken to the emergency room, but it's only a pit stop. She'll be joining her daughter behind bars. This crowd of wide-eyed tourists sees the show of their lives. A high-speed chase, a swarm of police, a team of mother-daughter outlaws, all with a show-stopping Hollywood ending. The Florida Keys, four miles off the coast of Boca Chica. It's a high-speed chase through choppy seas. A Coast Guard interceptor pursues a speedboat filled with Cuban immigrants. They come dangerously close to smashing into each other. The refugees are determined to make an illegal landfall. But a warning shot across their bow convinces them to drop anchor. The officers finally reach the smuggler's craft and immediately board the vessel. The ship is stuffed with the human cargo of 31 Cuban immigrants. Officers unload the stowaways from the overcrowded conditions. The smugglers are facing serious jail time for their reckless run from authorities. Coming up, a fleeing suspect opens fire on police then pays a punishing price. Plus, cops blow out the tires of a thief in a rental truck, sparking a shower of rolling molten metal. 84, 31, 31. That's next on Most Shocking High Speed Pursuits. Fort Lauderdale, Florida. When it comes to bad luck, this criminal takes the cake. Particular June now. The defiant driver has just gone on an overnight breaking and entering spree. His latest stop, just moments ago, was this convenience store. A quick smash and grab job. Except the suspect can't find any money. So he leaves empty handed, right past an officer responding to the alarm. Now he flees in the worst getaway car ever built. A moving truck. Spikes reduces tires to freeway sparklers. Police simply follow the slow motion trail of molten metal right into a concrete wall. Oh, 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 
Officers tase the suspect to finally bring him under control. I have the suspect. The man is hauled into custody. The wheels of his getaway car are worn down to the rims. Now he'll have to pack it up and head to jail. I have the suspect. Istanbul, Turkey. Although it sounds like the Wild West. Cruisers exchange gunfire with a driver who just ran a police checkpoint. Bullets fly down the streets. The suspect heads toward a crowded neighborhood looking for potential hostages. Instead, he ends up stuck in a pothole. Police immediately swarm. The man struggles and gets a swift boot to the ribs. He continues to cry out, but his running days are over. So who is this gun-wielding wild man? A mobster? A wanted murderer? A search of his car reveals the truth. There's alcohol in the cab and stolen loot in the trunk. He's just a small-time boozing burglar who got in over his head. Now he'll be cooling his heels in jail. Up next, a defiant driver outruns a cruiser but crashes in a terrifying fireball. Plus, a tipsy Russian trucker terrorizes helpless drivers. But his getaway goes belly up. On most shocking, high-speed pursuits. Waukesha County, Wisconsin. Deputy Brett Metzen is hot on the tail of a speeding driver. Pursuits are very unpredictable and uh, can sometimes be dangerous um, that you really never know what can happen in law enforcement from day to day. Barreling at 70 miles an hour, the officer fears a disaster is imminent, but he has no idea just how bad it will be. The sharp turn proves too much for the charging vehicle. The driver loses control, slamming into a tree. Metzen races to the scene. I immediately ran back to my squad and retrieved the fire extinguisher. When the extinguisher runs out, Metzen refuses to give up. He bravely battles the inferno with his bare hands, risking his own life to save the driver. I burned my hands in the process. Um, I really wasn't concerned about that at the time. Even though Deputy Metzen manages to free the man, tragically, he's unable to save his life. If I could tell the public only one thing, if a police officer is behind you or someone's requiring that you stop, please do so as quickly and efficiently as possible. St. Petersburg, Russia. A drunk driver behind the wheel of a semi-truck wreaks havoc on the highway. He's already slammed into this police cruiser, cracking the windshield. The four-ton behemoth weaves recklessly across the road. Nearly flipping over. All cops can do is hang back and hope he doesn't kill someone. Suddenly, the intoxicated trucker swerves again.
Officers race to pull the man from the mangled cab. Incredibly, he's not injured, but he has passed out. He's lucky. This is one drunken joyride that was headed down the road to ruin. Coming up, an outlaw tries to make a getaway through a cow pasture. But a tenacious posse stays right on his hide. That's next on Most Chuckin' High Speed Pursuits. Alvin, Texas. Robbery suspect Clifford Flewellen tries to outrun the law. The crook makes a hard turn into a gas station. Over a curb. And down a narrow back road. The driver picks up speed. He's hitting 60 miles an hour when he blasts through a heavy metal gate. And onto a cow pasture. The chase sends frightened cattle in every direction. Officer Jason Schumach is the lead squad car in the pursuit. We had to to weave in and out of the, the cows that were in the field without, you know, hitting any of them. The robber blazes straight toward a tree line. He busts through two barbed wire fences and rumbles into tall grass. The cops do all they can to stay close. We knew he has a slight advantage in being in a bigger vehicle. We just stayed in his trails and, and followed the best we could. The truck finally comes to a stop when it crashes into a tree. The felon leaps out and runs for it. Police race after him. It only takes a minute for them to collar the crook. We were able to chase him for, I would say, about 50 yards. Um, and then he realized we were closing in on him, and he gave up. The bank robber met his match when he ran up against a tenacious posse of lawmen who weren't about to let a bovine roadblock keep him from justice. High-speed pursuits present one of the greatest challenges to law enforcement today. In these volatile confrontations, often...